Versatile is the best word to describe the Sikorsky UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter. With many portrayals in media, a 50-year service record, and several variants to accomplish any mission, the Black Hawk is one of the most beloved aerial transport vehicles of the U.S. military. So settle in and make sure you don't miss the rope while we explore the fascinating history of this famous helicopter. But first, if you enjoy the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel as we release regularly scheduled videos that cover famous military vehicles throughout history. The conception of the Black Hawk dates back to the late 1960s, when the U.S. Army decided it was time to replace the iconic UH-1 Iroquois helicopter, best known for its service in Vietnam. The program to develop the new helicopter was called the Utility Tactical Transport Aircraft System and had the goal of creating a helicopter that would be more reliable and have increased survivability. Features were proposed to the Army such as dual engines, flight controls that could withstand ballistic impacts, and increased armor plating. Prototypes were submitted by Sikorsky and Boeing that kicked off a competition in the mid-70s to decide who would manufacture the next generation of transport helicopters. Boeing's prototype, the Vertol YUH-61, was found to be too complex and expensive to maintain. Additionally, the YUH-61 placed the main rotor too close to the top of the cabin, resulting in noticeable vibration issues. Sikorsky's prototype, on the other hand, came equipped with a removable mast extension to alleviate all vibration problems. Additionally, the Sikorsky prototype was brimming with exactly what the Army wanted, survivability. Sikorsky introduced a reinforced airframe that could withstand most crashes, redundant hydraulic systems, and fuel tanks with extra protection against small arms fire. The bottom line was simple. U.S. troops would be safer in Sikorsky's prototype. Thus, the Sikorsky UH-60 was chosen and given the name Black Hawk after the Sauk Native American leader who attempted to reoccupy lands during the Black Hawk War of 1832. Before official production began on the Black Hawk, however, it went through a series of modifications. For one, Sikorsky was charged with making the Black Hawk as light as humanly possible so that add-ons could be introduced in the future. The pre-production model of the Black Hawk was a full 1,000 pounds lighter than the original prototype. The Black Hawk began full production in late 1978, and the helicopter entered service in early 1979. Variants of the Black Hawk were developed almost immediately. The EH-60 came with the ability to conduct electronic warfare and had infrared countermeasures. The VH-60 was designed for transporting important government officials. A fun fact is that when a VH-60 is transporting the president, it is given the call sign Marine One. Some Blackhawks were equipped with six patient litter racks in place of seats and were designated to be used for medevac operations. To this day, some Blackhawk variants are still kept secret by the U.S. government. As more Blackhawks were produced throughout the 1980s, modifications were naturally made to the base model so it could adapt to the ever-changing landscape of America's missions. New automated systems were introduced that could lock altitude and speed, making flight controls more intuitive. External carrying arms were also added to the Black Hawk that allowed for the addition of external fuel tanks, increasing the operational range of the Black Hawk to over 1,100 nautical miles. It could also use these arms to carry 16 Hellfire missiles. In just a few years, the Black Hawk became certifiably pimped out. Because there are now so many variants of the Black Hawk, it is difficult to put a singular price tag on the aircraft, but the most commonly used Army variant costs roughly $6 million to produce. The base Black Hawk features four blade main and tail rotors. The helicopter is powered by two General Electric T700 turboshaft engines that can each generate over 1,500 shaft horsepower. The maximum capacity of the Black Hawk is about 11 troops with their equipment. Another interesting fact is that the Black Hawk has a carrying capacity of about 2,600 pounds of internal cargo, but it can handle about 9,000 pounds of cargo when it is attached externally. 
Two pilots and two gunners make up the crew of the aircraft. The full length of the Black Hawk is roughly 64 feet, or eight Congolese zebra giraffes. With a width of less than eight feet, the Black Hawk is a distinctly elongated and narrow helicopter, making it easier to store on C-130 transport planes. The Black Hawk has a top speed of nearly 220 miles per hour, but typical flight speed for a Black Hawk is about 180 miles per hour. The long 53 feet main rotors give the craft a climbing speed of 8.4 meters per second. In terms of firepower, the Black Hawk has several different options. Two M240 machine guns are common weapon systems seen on a Black Hawk, but there can also be two M134 miniguns or two GAU-19 Gatling guns. Hydra and Hellfire missiles can also be loaded onto a Black Hawk in the event that it takes part in an advanced air raid. One of the lesser known capabilities of the Black Hawk is the Volcano Minefield Dispersal System. System, which allows landmines to be spread over a wide area. The volcano can hold 960 mines and can produce a minefield approximately 1150 meters by 125 meters. The armor of the Black Hawk is concentrated around the pilot's seats, but heavy armor is laid all throughout the fuselage that can withstand small arms fire of up to 23 millimeters in caliber. Both rotor systems are built with titanium cores that are also capable of withstanding a shocking amount of anti-air fire. The 101st Airborne was the first American division to begin using the Black Hawk when training began in 1979. The primary mission set was to carry air cavalry companies into combat, but it also found use as a medevac and rescue vehicle. Additionally, the Navy would begin to use their own version of the Black Hawk, named the Sea Hawk, in 1983. The Sea Hawk comes with foldable blades and tail that allow it to be jam-packed onto aircraft carriers. The Sea Hawk is also coated with specialized material to reduce corrosion in the sea air and has enlarged fuel cells. In the early 1980s, Sikorsky was also commissioned by the Army to create two derivative Black Hawk models that were specifically designed for electronic warfare. The YEH-60B came equipped with a large rotating radar antenna that could detect moving targets on the battlefield. On this model, the landing gear had to be elongated to provide ground clearance for the underbelly antenna. However, this landing gear also had to be retractable so there would be enough clearance for the antenna to spin. A fun fact. is that only one YEH-60B was ever produced, and some aviation enthusiasts have seen it active on flight radars as recently as two years ago. The EH-60 AC Quick Fix variant had the purpose of intercepting, monitoring, and jamming enemy radio transmissions using a four-dipole antenna mounted on the tail cone. 66 units of the Quick Fix were produced and eventually employed by the Army. In the late 1980s, the base model of the Black Hawk was replaced with the UH-60L. The L model had two beefier T-700 engines, as well as stronger flight controls, and an improved transmission system. The Black Hawk saw its first real combat during the invasion of Grenada in 1983, but it was really allowed to stretch its legs, or its rotors, during the Gulf War in 1991. Another fun fact is that part of the Gulf War included the largest air assault mission in U.S. Army history in which over 300 helicopters were used. During the Desert Storm conflict, one Black Hawk with the call sign Bengal 15 was dispatched to try and rescue Captain William Andrews who had been shot down while flying as F-16. Bengal 15 would end up being shot down, tragically killing several of the crew. The survivors were taken prisoner by Iraqi forces and were not released until the Gulf War ended months later. One other Black Hawk was shot down during the Gulf War, this time killing all eight service members on board. Soon after, in 1993, the Black Hawk took part in the infamous Battle of Mogadishu, where two Black Hawks were shot down, as portrayed in the 2001 film starring the legendary Tom Sizemore, as well as some lesser-known B-list actors. The Black Hawk would go on to play a key role in the global war on terror throughout the 2000s. During the initial invasion of Afghanistan, Black Hawks were used to escort special operations troops into Afghanistan. This flight took place under zero visibility conditions and lasted 11 hours, setting a new record for combat helicopters around the world. To add to this already impressive list of achievements, Black Hawks from the 160th SOAR Regiment took part in the first phase of Operation Iraqi Freedom in March of 2003. These Black Hawks helped destroy more than 70 Iraqi observation posts in just seven hours. The Black Hawk would continue to serve as the Army's premier transport and medevac helicopter for the remainder of the war, with hundreds of missions conducted in Iraq and Afghanistan. 
A key highlight in the helicopter's career was when two highly modified Black Hawks were used in the mission to kill Osama bin Laden in 2011. A fun fact is that the Black Hawks used in this mission were secret Black Hawk variants that came equipped with extra stealth features such as a noise-canceling tail rotor. One of these Black Hawks crash landed during the operation and had to be destroyed to prevent it from falling into enemy hands. An MH-47 Chinook was dispatched to help complete the mission, another iconic American helicopter for another video. The Black Hawk has seen uses outside of the military as well. U.S. Border Protections use the Black Hawk in its search and rescue operations. There is even a very special variant, the S-70I Firehawk, used by the Los Angeles County Fire Department. This variant is designed for aerial firefighting, rescue, and medical transport. We once again emphasize the word that perfectly describes the Black Hawk helicopter. Versatile. With so many uses for the Black Hawk, it seems like an irreplaceable staple in America's vehicular armory. However, there have been steps taken to eventually replace the beloved helicopter. The Future Long Range Assault Aircraft Program was launched in 2019, in which Bell competed with a joint Sikorsky Boeing team to develop a new style of rotary wing aircraft that would fill a similar role to the Black Hawk. In December of 2022, it was announced that Bell's unique V 280 Valor was the winner of the competition. It is important to note, however, that this does not necessarily guarantee that the Valor will end up replacing the Black Hawk. So far, contracts have only been made to develop further prototypes. Mass producing and adopting the Valor would require many further contracts after several years of testing. Regardless of what the future holds, the Black Hawk has already accomplished more than enough to cement itself in the Hall of Fame of America's aviation history. Whether conducting aerial assaults or saving lives in medevac operations, America owes a great debt to the UH-60 Blackhawk and its highly versatile performance.